Right then, this is my first recording I've done with my new Blue Snowball microphone, so this better sound good, because this microphone did cost a lot of money. Anyway, let's get on with the video, how to do your own home IVs. So then, after a week, I managed to escape the hospital, but I haven't escaped having to do IVs, so I'm now doing them at home, and when you do home IVs, you get delivered a whole load of stuff from Baxter Healthcare, and Baxter Healthcare are a really crap company. Last time round, I actually had to miss a dose, because they delivered all the stuff when they wanted to deliver, which meant I had to miss a dose which is disgusting this is the privatization of the nhs this is pretty much what the nhs is going to be like in the future uh, where it's going under the tories anyway back to the video and this is all of the stuff that baxter healthcare have delivered and it is a lot of stuff including a fridge and on top of the fridge there's all these big delivery notes and loads of crap and some other stuff to do with the fridge and let's take a look inside the fridge and there is loads of different medicines so then let's take a look at the boxes they've delivered and just to give you an idea how much waste is produced through this this is the waste box which I believe gets incinerated rather than put into landfill in case it's contaminated and I'm three quarters away from my IVs and it is full. Now that is pretty scary. This is really really bad for the environment. I mean just look how much waste is produced here. I mean a lot of this stuff could actually be reused but it couldn't be reused for IVs because IVs have to be sterile so that means having a new thing every single time but a lot of the stuff like the syringes could be reused for other stuff. Couldn't be made sterile again but it could be cleaned and used for something else. It's just a ridiculous amount of waste here. And so then here is the shops bin. Danger. Contaminated shops and if you look inside there is some needles although these are not actually contaminated because I don't actually use the needles for injecting which you'll see later on so then let's take a look at our boxes and in these boxes here is the pre-filled salines which I can't actually use because I have a reaction to them but even the doctors don't know why I get this reaction and I think it's something to do with the way it's pre-filled full of saline meaning all the plastic over the time seeps into it or something because when these are injected it makes me feel like oh this is awful they shouldn't have been delivered because these are now just going to be incinerated because they can't accept them back because once they've been delivered to a patient they can't be delivered to another patient in case someone's done something to it so that's just a load of waste so then in this box is full of stuff and the first thing is alcohol wipes and this is the only thing that will still come in handy after I finish with the IVs because these are really useful and the next thing is latex gloves now there's a very precise procedure of putting these on to keep them sterile which I'll show later on and the next thing is an extra thing to put over where the line goes in in case it starts to peel off over time and I didn't actually have to use this and in the next box there is pre-filled peppermints and this is an anti-clotting thing so you put it in the line when you finish using it so that blood doesn't clot around the very end of the line and the next thing is the needles and look how many needles they've sent me I'm never going to need that many needles that's ridiculous why have they sent me so many needles and in this box is the salines. This is the make it yourself salines because I can't use the pre-fills. And once again, they've given me a massive oversupply. I mean, I'm three quarters through my IVs and look how many I've got left. Although salines will come in handy for backflowing my nebulizer, so these won't go to waste. And in the big box, there is loads and loads and loads of syringes. And once again, they've given me a massive oversupply of syringes. I'm never going to need that many. Why are they giving me so many syringes? So then, let's now do my IV. And I'm sounding really enthusiastic because I'm recording this once I've actually finished doing it. Because it's a real pain having to do these. I mean, I couldn't really go out and film any lives doing this. Because I have to do this three times a day. And, well, I have to keep this completely sterile. So I couldn't risk doing it outside. So I've been stuck not doing very much. Well, mainly coding my game, which has now been released. So please take a look at my game, which is beno.org.uk slash livegame slash mmog. My new live filming game multiplayer. So then, let's now do my home IV. And let's take a look through the stuff. Firstly, alcohol. I need to put alcohol in my hands. My hands are perfectly clean before doing anything else. So then, the first thing I've got here is an EpiPen and this is in case I have a massive reaction to the IV so I, I stab myself with it and something goes wrong which is very unlikely to happen but there just in case. So let's go through the stuff in the tray. Firstly a syringe, a bottle of make it yourself saline, a pre-filled heparin, an alcohol wipe, and some sterile gloves, a needle and tobramycin. So then let's go. So then here is the IV, it comes in a bubble which pushes through the IV at the correct rate. So open it up and you do this before putting on the gloves and put this on the side. And make sure the end of it doesn't touch anything dirty because it has to stay really clean. And this has to go through at a certain speed, it can't go through too fast because it makes you faint. Which that stupid nurse back at Medway Hospital when I was 10 years old did not know that and tried to push it through on a syringe and made me faint. Some nurses are really crap and don't know what they're doing by the way so you have to be really careful with nurses. So then first thing, open 
up the saline and then when doing this be extremely careful not to touch the sterile part at the top of the bottle as you do this then put this on the side now you open up the sterile gloves now you have to do this without actually touching any of the sterile part of the paper because they come in a bit of paper and the paper is the sterile area which you use to do the IV so you only touch the very edges of the paper as you do this and so then here is a bit of paper open it up and you can see if the glove hasn't been that made that well because a bit of a glove sticking out although that area is still sterile and open it up without touching the sterile area and remember I've touched the ends of this bit of paper so I mustn't put anything sterile in the ends because the ends of it where I've just touched are no longer sterile so here are the sterile gloves and that is now my sterile area which I'm going to use for doing the IV so the next thing I do is take the syringe and still haven't put the gloves on yet and the outside packaging of the syringe is not sterile but the syringe in the packaging is so we take out the syringe without touching the syringe itself and without touching the inside of the packaging I only touch the outside of the packaging and I drop it into where the gloves are so that syringe is completely sterile now and the next thing I do is the exact same thing with the needle so only touching the outside of the packaging don't touch the needle itself do not touch the inside of the packaging and drop it into the sterile area so the needle still stays sterile and one important thing is all of the stuff that you finished with you put it on the floor you just drop it on the floor and that's why you don't mix up any of the stuff you finished with with the stuff you're still using so then the next thing I do is the alcohol wipe and I'm only again only touching the outside of the packaging and the alcohol wipe itself is sterile and I drop the wipe into the sterile area and without touching the wipe itself without touching anything but the outside packaging so it stays completely clean now I pick up the glove notice I'm touching the bit of the glove which will be inside my hand which will be inside the glove when I put it on so only touching the bit which is folded which is the inside of the glove I put the glove on without touching the outside of the glove because the outside of the glove stays sterile now with the hand with the glove on I now touch the outside of the glove since this is a sterile hand since this is a sterile hand so that touches the sterile bit of the glove but the hand which I don't have a glove on touches the only the inside of the glove because this is a non-sterile part then don't is how I put it on, putting my fingers through, touching only the sterile area with the gloved hand, pulling a glove up. When before, when I put on the first glove, I was touching the other side. This is to make sure it all stays sterile. So then, get the needle, and I can touch this with the gloves because it's completely sterile. Pick up the needle. Now, this is a slightly tricky bit, is pulling out the saline. So I take off the end of the needle, and then I have to put it into the saline. Now, I have to do this really carefully so the needle only goes straight in, not touching the outside. If the needle touches the outside of the saline, I have to discard that needle because that's touch a non sterile area. So put the needle in, only touching the sterile area, which is inside of the saline and as I fill up the needle I have to move the saline over to get to the bottom of it remember I cannot touch the outside of the saline bottle with my gloved hands because the outside of the bottle is not sterile and I need to keep the gloves sterile so then that's one syringe full of saline and if you don't know what saline is it's purified water with a little tiny bit of salt added so it matches the salticity and the pH of your blood so when it goes in you can't feel a thing so then the next thing I do now is I've actually made a mistake so I need my assistant or in other words my mum to open up the line for me because I should have done this before putting on the gloves so I've actually made a mistake here so if I was doing this on my own that wouldn't be good now notice I'm now touching the line and so my left hand is no longer sterile because I'm touching the line that's been in the bandage that's not a slice bit clean so only my right hand is now sterile my left hand isn't so then let's now just take a look at the line this is a bit of the medicines go in at the end and this actually goes into my arm here which is the point where it goes in my arm and this tube goes right through my veins and comes out near where my heart is which is at a really big vein and this is because these medicines I'm putting in are irritants and it irritates my veins and it puts it in at the biggest vein which is near where my heart is and because the vein is really big the medicine is more diluted here into my blood so it's less of an irritant so then I now pick up with my clean hand I pick up the alcohol wipe and now I then clean the end of the line I have to do this very thoroughly because this end of the line is not the slightest bit clean at all so I've got to make sure this is absolutely botlessly clean no germs whatsoever before I put through any medicines now once I've done this I now need to wait for the alcohol to evaporate remember this is industrial alcohol not the stuff you can drink and I do not want to push any of this alcohol through into my blood but luckily alcohol evaporates extremely quickly so then the next thing I do is I now pick up the syringe in my clean hand and this bit I don't necessarily need gloves for because from this point onwards I'm not actually going to touch any more sterile areas so later on when I finish off your IVs I don't actually use gloves because it's not actually needed so then with the syringe I push out all of the air unlike one of the nurses at hospital which was failing to actually prime the line properly leaving a load of air in which was not good and that nurse couldn't even speak very good English she really didn't know what she was doing of at all that was a bit scary but luckily at home I'm doing it all myself so I can make sure I do it all properly so then with the syringe I now put it into the line first things first I need to make sure my arm is in the right position to make sure the line isn't blocked if I have my arm in the wrong position it actually hurts when it goes in so I have to make sure my arm's in the right position to make sure it all goes through nice and smoothly next thing is I need to unclip the line and I did that with my clean hands so now both my hands are now not sterile anymore but that doesn't matter because I'm not going to touch the actual sterile areas because look how I connect it I don't actually have to touch the sterile points of this so then I now push it through to start with really slowly because the line's full of heparin and really slowly naturally see it go through 
can see that slight bubble going through the line. Now after the first meal, I can speed up and make sure the line's completely clear by pushing through the say line fairly quickly, making sure uh, there's not much pressure of it going through to make sure the medicine's going through nice and smoothly. And after I've done this, I now take the bottle of tobramycin, which is one of the strongest medicines of the mycin family. So I take off the cap at the end. And first thing is I need to prime the line and again, drop the cap on the floor because I want to make sure the whole area I'm working so is completely free of clutters. And so then open up medicine and the line itself is full of air. So I need to make sure all of this line is full of medicine before I start. And the drip of medicine comes out, meaning the line is now no longer full of air and it's full of medicine. So only now can I connect the line into my line. And with that connected, I then release it and the topomycin now goes into my veins and it should take an hour to go through but these self pushing bubbles that push through the medicine are always on the safe side so do it slightly longer than it should be so it actually takes one and a half hours to go through And now, an hour and a half later, it's now time to finish off the IV. So I disconnect the tobramycin. Now pick up the syringe of saline. Now this is in the sterile area and it's remained sterile through the time I was doing IV. So the whole time I was doing IV, I had to make sure absolutely nothing went near this sterile area to keep the syringe sterile for where I needed it at the end. From it now, pick up syringe and my hands are not sterile, but that doesn't matter because I'm not actually going to be touching the vital part, which is where the liquid comes out the end of the syringe. Because I'm not touching it, I don't actually need gloves for this bit. Now I connect the syringe of saline up to the line. Initially, push it slowly for a first meal because I'm pushing through the topomycin already in my line that bit has to go in slowly then once that's in I've been pushing the rest of the saline fairly quickly and then once the saline's been pushed through I take this off get a pre-filled heparin and I'm only pushing through one meal of heparin to make sure the line is full of heparin so it doesn't clog up with blood and that is how you do your home IV